Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the uh, coronavirus no haircut edition. Um, so I'll put on my hat. This video is about water testing. Most of the time we would do this in a lab to learn these techniques, and then we'd go out in the field to apply them and, and practice and, and try to learn about water quality out there in the field using these techniques. We are stuck in lockdown still, so I'm making this video to sort of show you some of these techniques. Bear with me, it'll be quite word heavy as we go through the slides, and I'll do my best. Um, first thing to understand when we're doing water testing uh, is looking at direct versus indirect measurements. And so we'll kind of use that language as we go through. A direct measurement is stated here. Uh, you'll be able to measure something to record a specific pollutant. You really put the, usually these are chemical tests that we'll see. Um, and you'll see exactly the amount of the pollutant in there. An indirect test will be something that will tell you about the environment, and that environment will indicate what's going on in the water. So it's not a direct measurement of the pollutant itself. Uh, measuring how many of uh, a certain type of invertebrate bug lives in that water. Sometimes if you find leeches, it means it's really polluted. So I'm not, I don't know the exact pollution or how much of it's in there, but if I find a lot of leeches in there, I know that the water's polluted. So that's an indirect measure. And we'll see, we'll talk about this as we go. As, as, as I said, it's gonna be word heavy, but I wanted to put all the techniques um, regarding physical and chemical tests on one slide in the dark blue over there. Those are the things that we would test for in nature to see if the water is uh, stable, if it's um, healthy, or if it's polluted. And a lot of these things can tell you the story. The more you do, the better picture you have of what's going on with that water. You'd switch from chemical and physical testing. You can also do biological testing. This is a lot of the types of tests that you'll see people carrying nets around in the field. Um, and we can do these very quickly. These are really nice, um, quick things to do. Kick sampling um, and using a biotic index is a, a handy test. You can literally put a net in the water uh, below downstream from you and, and kick samples into that net and see what comes up in the net and identify um, the abundance and the diversity of these different um, species that you see in this drawing over here. If you look at the top of the drawing, you see things like mayflies, um, stoneflies. If those are found in water, it's an indication that it's really, really clean water. They, they have a, a low tolerance for uh, pollutants and they'll die off very quickly. So if you see a lot of mayflies, it's a quick indication very quickly that it's a pretty clean, healthy water source. If you see a lot of uh, leeches down here on the bottom or midges um, or either mosquitoes, that's an indication that's stagnant water and it's quite polluted. So biological tests are really, really handy because you can do them very quickly. You don't need fancy equipment at all. You just need a, a card to tell you which um, invertebrates are, are considered healthy water and which invertebrates are in what we call polluted water. When we're looking at biological tests as well, we could also talk about the microorganisms. And by these things, I'm talking about E. coli and fecal streptococci. Um, these are bacteria that are uh, dangerous for us. Fecal streptococci, that basically is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's bacteria that, that feed on, on human excrement waste poop. Um, the good thing about doing these tests is you can find E. coli and streptococci streptococcus pretty easy and you can replicate them pretty easily. So they're available um, and we can identify them very easily and we can isolate them very easily in labs. The problem with these tests is, is they're, they're quite expensive to run because you need a lot of those, uh, you need a lot of um, agar gel uh, and a lot of petri dishes and an extremely sterile environment. It also takes about 48 hours to get your results. So it's time consuming as well. 